um, I'll open us up today. F your boss Fridays. It is Friday. It's actually a, uh, a nice Friday here in Vegas. Brittany, you're out of uh, uh, Utah, though. You guys getting snow there, right? I think we got like 10 inches the past couple of days. Okay. Oh, wow. Feels yeah. like it. Great. So um, let me open the show here with uh, give you an idea of what we're going to be talking about today. Thank you again for coming on. The entire broadcast that we want to do in episodes to come is fueled by the energy around taking the leap from the nine to five to owning your own business. And we're going to explore every topic in that area that, so, that supports everything from fear of starting your own business to marketing strategies to break the million dollar mark, which is where you'd like to be, right, Rhett? Right. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, um, anyway, Brittany, um, thanks for coming on here. I know we strung you along all day long, but you're still here and we appreciate it bringing your energy. Um, you are out of Utah. You're a close friend of ours. Um, we watched you take the leap. We felt it was pretty exciting to watch you do that. And um, we, were, we felt like we were a big part of it. So we just wanted to share that journey with some of our listeners and uh, right now, Brittany's a successful insurance agent for Kellogg, and we just thought her story was cool enough to share with our listeners. So welcome, Brittany. Um, you are part of the club, the Entrepreneur Club, doing your own Yay, business. Yeah, yeah. So what's the name of your business, Brittany? Actually, my LLC is Brittany Speaks Medicare, so <laughs> my very first one. <laughs> Which also matches up to her initials and yep. her name. Yep. I yes, that was those pretty are my cool. Initials. Remember talking about that? Like, look, it matches my initials, right? I do. Yes, and your guys' help. Well, um, I enjoyed the, the whole process. I remember um, back in the beginning, you were like, well, first of all, terrified <laughs> of like what was happening, and you had, it was. To, yeah. Let's set the stage here for our listeners. You, you didn't think you were gonna. This wasn't planned. So look, tell us about, no. like, yeah, I mean, Lisa and I obviously know, but for some of our listeners, could you share with them, like, what made you take the leap or what kind of put you in that situation? Well, I mean, looking at it now, I feel like all the stepping stones kind of aligned, but you're right. I never thought I would really be my own boss or have my own business, but what led me to here was, I mean, I've always had multiple jobs. I've always been a hard worker. I've always been a hustler, whatever I needed to do. Um, I had been in insurance benefits for a couple of years already. Uh, Stepping Stone was getting my insurance license. Got that finally. But you were doing well, I moved as over an to employee, a, right? Yes, as an employee. Mm -hmm. So I had that. I moved over to a company, which I was excited for. And I'm like, great. I only need one job. Cause I was going to make great money. Well, they ended up letting me go after four months because I didn't catch on quick enough. And I was just in shock. I was probably down for a month. I didn't know what to do. I came to visit you guys, you know, and being around you and your guys's attitude and your entrepreneurship, you know, your advice. And when I had reached out to a friend, cause I actually tried to reach out to an old friend a couple of years ago to check out the Medicare industry, but that because changed, I worked multiple right? jobs. Yeah, there was Chase Belknap. So uh, we had met for lunch years ago, but it didn't work out because I worked so many jobs. I didn't have time to go, you know, do the retail thing. So after they let me go and, you know, you guys helped build some confidence in me and be like, hey, just do it. Uh, I called him and I said, hey, I just got let go from my job. I have a huge window of time. What do I have to do? So, I mean, now looking back, it's weird. It's been a year and a half since I sat on your guys' couch. Seems and like thought, I know. Oh I was God. just going to say the couch scene. That's the scene I remember the most, yeah. the couch scene. Yeah. I seriously sitting there and you were just kind of going over numbers with me, like hypothetically and, you know, just saying. Because I had explored the insurance you were kind of setting before, the yeah. On which was, yeah. So with your familiarity with it, you know, kind of setting a stage for me and helping me understand, like, it's going to build and build and just you know, so it's, that's what I'm saying. Now it's weird to look back how we were sitting in your living room, going over what, what, can, what could be is now I've already made it through my second AEP and my first years of residuals wow. start this next year. 
Remember, so, we talked about coming to this place, Brittany, and looking back. Do you remember? On the, we were like, so when weird. we look yeah. back, we're going to talk about this. And here we are. Right, we we talked about this moment. They fired me, blah, blah, blah. And now I'm like, you know what? Okay, I'm going to do something better. I'm not going to stay where I was left. I won't do that. So I only need, you know, a few years. But I'm halfway there. You know, other agents have told me, as long as you can make it through the first two years, you're golden. You right. know, so my my first goal was to get to where my residuals pay my bills and I'm pretty close for 2024 and it's only a year away. Love it. So wow. it's just We're building so on top happy of that. For you, you don't even know. We love telling so your story. I, this is the first time we're you. getting it and recording it. So we're always telling people like our friend, Brittany, same thing. She was terrified. Right. And yeah, the couch. I was scene. scared because it's commission only. It's like, you know, building, I don't know, commission only just scared me, but now that, you know, thinking, okay, how many people do you think I can get, you know, this and that, whatever. But now I literally have maybe like 103 clients. Let's so it's talk about those say, 103 clients. Holy crap. Right. Two years. Yeah. So, so it's building. It really so, is. And I've been transparent with all of them telling them, you know, I'm brand new, but I just, I know what kind of person I am with people. And I just, that's helped me also, you know, I'm very transparent and let them know. I will educate you on what I know, but I've just built so many great friendships and relationships with people like strangers that, that I've just been in their home for hours. That is so your superpower. I totally seen it in you. Lisa obviously can see, everyone could see it. Like we already knew it was like getting you to this place where, you know, where you're at. So with that said, you know, what really fascinated me is before we started, you know, going live with the recording and in the podcast here, uh, you said you're writing handwritten thank you cards. You have to get started now, right? Like AEP is over for you. So tell us about customer service and why that's so important to you. We feel it's a, a big part of like retention and that type of thing. So tell us, yeah, tell us why you decided to do that. Why is that so important Do you feel? Not only for you, but for the business. Well, meeting these people in person and then seeing what kind of person I am and just my personality, my mannerisms and everything, how I treat them, how I talk to them. I mean, I don't want, I don't want to send out a robotic letter to them. I want them to know this is my handwriting. This is my signature. You know, I am truly here for you. I'm not going to sign you up and then see it. Like I do check on you throughout the year. You are very important to me. Like my first group of 50 people, they're like my babies. Yeah. You know, they are the first people who trusted me with their health insurance. Like, right. you know, these are seniors, seniors who are thinking, telling me I'm trusting you. I'm trusting my putting my health in your hands. You know, they and really are. Just, I mean, because a lot of them don't know what's going on. It's a complicated place to navigate. Wouldn't you agree? Very. Yeah. Even I for you, would. right? Imagine these people. Some of them don't have emails. <laughs> well, everything that I've learned, that's where I was saying, like, I've just spent some hours sometimes in these people's homes, like breaking it down, making sure they understand, you know, and just letting them, letting them know I'm going to be a resource. I'm your agent. You call mm -hmm. me if you need me. So the retention and writing these personable letters, that's something huge. And that's something I will continue to do with them to be like, Hey, I'm a real person. I'm not just like a robotic agent insurance. That's not what I'm about. Right. So when does that stop? At what point? Yeah. Are, I'm wondering, <laughs> right. When, when does so, that so I, mean, I will continue question, to write. Right? Yeah, of course. So I'll continue to write thank you letters for new clients, but I won't stop. I will continue to reach out to everybody a couple times throughout the year. Right. That's awesome. Cool. So let's tap into the business model there. Um, primarily got open enrollment, right? And then you have your off time. So this is a time now for you to really. Yeah, so let's actually go into that. Like how much do you work to get this yeah. Many clients. Yeah. So, so if you don't mind disclosing your income in a nice round number, and then um, uh, just so our listeners can see like in the impact that you've done and in, in, in just like your monthly expenses, um, maybe someone else out there. If you're comfortable. Yeah. With if it. you're comfortable with it. But if maybe there's someone out there who hears that goes, what? Right. Like. I'd rather not disclose all that into detail, but I will mm -hmm. tell you even just my first group of people with my residual starting, my mortgage is paid. So it's like just with those first. And this is monthly recurring with me, passive income, correct? And I'll get I'll get paid every month on them because they're enrolled with me. So that's why just kind of circling back for two seconds, my retention is huge. I, I want to build these relationships and let them know 
how personable I am and that they want to stay with me as their, as my client and not move mm -hmm. on to someone next who they think someone might care about them more. Right. That's why I do reach out and I do, you know, just make them feel comfortable and know that I am someone who will always take care of them and I will always be here. So that's why when I say those first 50 people really are my babies because mm -hmm. they're the first people, like I said, who trusted me. Those are the first group of people who I'm getting my residual from, you yeah. know, that's paying my mortgage. And I, you know, with this next year, with it starting, that's what I'm saying. Almost my bills, almost my bills are paid. This is so, so exciting, and right? You're just working like October, mid-October to mid-December. Yeah. Right? Talk about the time you're putting in and then how much free time and it's what it's given you, what's what it's given you back from the work you've put in for the last two years. Like, where are you at now? Tell us about your time and, the, and what that's given you for a, the different and a change of life. Well, for my first AEP, I didn't really know what marketing to do. I, you know, I was brand spanking new. I, you know, I didn't even know what I was doing, to be honest with you. I'm like, these people aren't going to trust me. They don't know. I, you know what I mean? I was just nervous. I was scared this and that. So about the marketing, I oh, was we know sure, you but... were nervous. We watched it. Huh? We know you were nervous. We watched. You're not now though. <laughs> so, you're not now though, Brittany. Look at how much confidence you have. Isn't this amazing? Like it's, you're a way different yeah. person now overall. I have definitely grown. I'm, I mean, Medicare is huge. It's a huge industry and it's always changing. And I just, I have grown and learned a lot. And I mean, so, I'm still learning, but I, I, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I am so eager to learn. Like I overheard you saying you just went out, had a, a drink with your dad. Like, remember when you were working three jobs, how hard it was to break away and have to spend time with the family. Right. Yeah. Or can you so, I mean, just tell us like what you're able to writing, do now? Yeah. It's just giving me flexibility. I mean, before, because I was, I had to work two to three jobs to, you know, pay my bills. And so I was working my full day, full daytime job during the week. And then I was at the airport on the weekend. So mm -hmm. I, I could hardly ever do anything. So that kind of sucked. But now, um, I mean, this first year was kind of hard a little bit because it was a dry and I would dry spot, airport, you know, after my first AEP. Job. Huh? You're at the airport working a job, not hanging out, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you work Just at the Salt point. Lake City Airport. Yeah, okay. Um, but, but now it's just giving me time. So, mm -hmm. you know, right now between this year and next year, I'm going to be doing the side jobs I have to do, but not working a nine to five, not answering to anybody really like a boss, you know, and having to... I don't know, commute anywhere really besides mm -hmm. like my side jobs that I'm doing, but you know, I choose those and yep. I'm still just trying to build my pipeline with Medicare. That's why, I mean, uh, the annual enrollment's the busiest season, but as far as right now, that's why I have some papers stuck to the wall in the back. Yeah. Those tell us about few, those. What do you got on there? Few, those are a few clients that are turning 65 next year that I'm going to reach out to that they have my phone okay, number. Okay. Great. So. Well, cool, man. That, I think that hits on all the things I was excited to touch base on. Remember, I said, we're coming back here, Brittany, and we're going to look back on this. So what are your goals for this year uh, moving forward? Are you um, going to quit your side jobs next year? Yeah, is that the goal? The goal, I think I I need to struggle one more year, and then I think by the <laughs> third year. But it's, it's going to be worth it because I've yeah. already seen what I'm capable of, and I do, all it's going to do is get better from here. So I'm just going to keep building and building. But as long as I make it, just be consistent with it and not give up. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm going to make it. I just need a couple years and I'm already halfway there. So, well, I'm going to say something kind of funny. I'm just curious to see your reaction. So you told us before that, you know, taking the nine to five leap from like that security of having the income to, you know, commission only or, you know, earning your business that way that anyone can do it was easy. I said anyone could do the 95. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, I was just going to get your reaction on that. Um, so what would you tell someone who is scared, Brittany? Like, like, cause it is scary, right? Like that feeling it of is. like, what, like, uh, that means no income in the next 30, 60, 90, yeah, that could happen. Right. So what do you, what could you tell someone like what got you through that or outside of, you know, the couch scene, but where we had this discussion, do you think maybe reaching out to some friends that they have or get, what do you think kind think of help someone? Know your why. And really, if you want it bad enough, you'll go for it. I was at the point where, I mean, getting fired from a job thinking, 
I've never been fired from anywhere. I like, how could you fire me? I know what a hard worker I am. And I know what I would have given to this company. Stop, what? So, I, yeah, like, <laughs> I don't know what's happening. So, you know, you know what yeah. I would normally say. No, yeah, but you were a hard worker. I mean, I came and ate at the restaurants that you worked at and like all the places that you were. We came and visited all the time. You were always killing it. And and you you that was not a stereotypical thing for you to get fired. It was usually a promotion or everyone yeah. loves you, right? So you're like, what? <laughs> I was in shock. So that's why I kind of, it just lit a fire underneath me. And so that's where the opportunity opened. So, I mean, yeah, I was on unemployment for a little bit and I mm -hmm. used that to my advantage. And I spent my time Studying. in Walmart mm -hmm. as much as I could. And yeah, getting contracted, taking my test, do whatever I had to do, you know, and Chase has said, okay. And that Threw wasn't easy in. either. Remember the test struggles that you went through? Like, what would you say to someone who maybe signs up and goes, wow, this is a lot of work, right? Like, you just keep plugging along or what? It doesn't come easy. It doesn't. But I mean, the average person also doesn't go the extra mile sometimes. I just don't think someone wants it bad enough if they're not willing to put in the work. It's not a get rich fast. Right. Would you like agree to all, live an extraordinary life with the freedom that you want and you do, do extraordinary things? Wouldn't you agree? I would absolutely agree. And that's yeah. why I'm hustling now, putting in the work now for the future that I want. I don't want 20 jobs when I'm older. I love I'm already Brittany. I don't want to work 20 jobs. <laughs> yeah, more. right. Right. And so with this now, it can even like three, four years, five years now, it may fuel a passion project for you, right? Like you could probably get involved in other things that are more like fruitful for like what you want to do with your life, right? Absolutely. This is, I think this is just the beginning. It's really just a building block, a big stepping stone to be able to make great money for something else to build other incomes for myself. Like it, this is just a great foundation that I've been starting to build, but I do have other things I want to do. I just need the money first. And if yes. Uh, what, uh, well, if you don't mind sharing what, like, what is the, in, what is going on in Brittany? What's in her heart? Like, where are you going? Uh, I don't know. There's a, there's, <laughs> there's a couple of things, honestly. I mean, I want to connect with you guys on your real estate stuff, you know, and right. have some kind of investment to where I can have some return. Yeah. Um, I really want to give back to some like homeless animals because okay. I've just been hit really hard with that. Yeah. And if I had some money to throw some, some girl that, you know, this is what I do when I take care of these cats is like, here's $500 or here's some food, you know, thank right. you for what you do. I just, I do want to make great money and you know, a living for myself, but I also want to give back give because back. I don't yeah. want to be greedy. I'm not, I'm, I'm not just a taker. I'm definitely a giver too. And I want to give back from what I've been able to receive. That makes yeah. me feel good. That's awesome. It's true. I think Lisa can agree that we've, we've, I've definitely been selfish in the game of making money, right? Historically, you're just trying to make ends meet, but there comes a time in your life where you're like, okay, I could keep doing this, but how am I contributing? And how am I giving back? People ask me all the time, well, why are you on the phone with me when you could just be out making money doing the same thing? Or why are you doing a podcast when you could you just be going and doing the thing that you're sharing with us? Well, how do I give back? You know, I'm at that point where how do I give and help Brittany get to this place? How do I give the most rewarding thing, Brittany, about this whole experience for us is that we were on the couch with you. I and know. We kind of want to be on the couch with like, other people too, metaphorically, right? And I think that's the whole reason behind this that really fueled it is you're the reward for us. Like your success is a big part of that giving back. And I think I can't wait for you to get to that point where you're giving back to your community in your own way. So um, yeah, I think that was a great note to hit on for sure. It's the look back. That's the gratification for me, definitely. Because I know when I'm telling, when I say like I'm halfway there and like, it's going to take me, you know, pro probably another year before I can quit doing like a few side jobs mm -hmm. to be able to survive. I mean, look how fast this past year went. And now I've already gone through my second. Oh, I know, right? So <laughs> it's I the, that earlier. It's it was just like, looking. I feel like we were just on the couch. 
we were. That's what I'm saying. It's that look back feeling like, oh my gosh, I was just crying a year and a half ago. And now I'm like, hell no, I'm way better than that. And I deserve better. And I'm going to make it for myself. And so those are okay. the baby steps, right? Like it's it's a big goal, right? And if you think of it all at once, it's very overwhelming. And what I've noticed, and I've, I have a little Wednesday meetup with a guy, he's diabetic and he's on this journey. And I've chosen to like kind of work with him as well, where He's just getting started. And if I would have told him when we went on our first walk, right? Like, hey, we're going to go here. He would have said, nah, that's a long ways, Chad. But what I did is I got him talking and we went around the block. And then I said, oh, and I said, no, this isn't the right way. We got to go this way. I got him walking three miles. He didn't even think he could do it. And so I think with with all of this said, if I was to tell you, you had to walk 10,000 miles in your whole lifetime, you'd you'd think, whoa, 10,000 miles? No way. It's not going to happen. But the reality is, on average, people walk 10,000 miles in their lifetime, right? But just one step at a time. So it isn't about looking, hey, I'm going to walk 10,000 miles. I might, but I'm going to take a step today. What's the progress and all the steps forward and what you're doing? So I feel like I've been trying my hardest to do everything I need to do, you know, and learn as much as I can along the way, but it is a journey. Absolutely. And I feel like I was giving myself anxiety thinking I had to have a million people right now, but I don't. don't. It's just, it's a journey. It'll continue to next year and the next year. Yeah. So, so I think I can relate to you, Brittany on the, your babies, right? So our, this is episode one, right? So we're going to have our own babies, right? We're going to have people who like really resonate with where we're at in our lives and what we're doing and our struggles that we share. Right. And I think our first few people, it's very, very important that our messaging is clear and that, you know, and who we can help. Right. So um, if we're contributing, I don't think we need a million people. Just it's not about the impact you make on the millions. It's the or, or how big the impact. How do, how do I how would I say that? It's not the quantity. It's the quality. Yeah. Like it. it's not about how uh, how many people you can impact, but how much you can impact just one. Right. So if if this right. podcast gives us the ability to reach farther, great. But um, we we really do care about the individuals and those success stories. It matters. Mm-hmm. Um, I have people that I look up to that have given me breaks and cut me during my musical career, and you know, even in construction. And and of course, I have my wife here. We know Brittany; she's awesome, right? Like this woman is so full of like wisdom in a mi- million different ways, including the, just her patience and her heart and everything. But um, but yeah, I I can definitely feel that that's big for us as well. Like that whole giving back and that our first babies and all that. So if you're listening out there, just know you're, you know, you're right at the beginning of the journey and thanks for being there. So. Yeah. All right. Did uh, anything else you want to touch on Brit or how you feeling so far? And your was this your first like kind of interview? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you think My that first you, baby interview. We'll have to do it in a year and talk. I was about just going to say the same thing. I'd that would be awesome, wouldn't it? Yeah. And I think yeah. this is almost important for people. That brings up another point: is that you should look. You should take some time to look back with the same do group of reflecting. people. Yeah, do some reflecting. Right? Maybe not on a interview or a podcast, but try to look back. So on New Year's, instead of looking forward, maybe this year. We say, hey, let's look back and be grateful. How does that sound, right? Like every year, let's look back and be grateful first. Then we can turn and look forward with gratefulness. What do you guys think? I agree. That's kind of maybe That's a little model, huh? So she actually does show my, every morning. Show my gratitude. You do? Tell us about that. I don't know if she wants to share. Well, you don't have to share if you don't want to, but yeah. So uh, Your morning routine. About what? Or is it nighttime? You have your little- What did you say? I'm sorry. Like you have your little affirmations you do it. Is it at bed or in the morning when you get up? I can't remember. Oh, I have like, like gratitude morning routine. But uh do you think it's beneficial to share? Do you think it could impact anyone or I mean or how oh, would it help you? Affirmations snuck out, Lisa. <laughs> what? Say that when again? my little gratitude little thing snuck out. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I really, it sounds cheesy, but I just thank God every night and I wake up and I say, thank you God for waking me up today because I'm grateful to be alive. You know, I know, I mean, not to even change like to different issue, but there's just a lot of 
mental struggles right now, I think with people, but I try to really strive on being thankful for just waking up for the day. So I love it. Britt, listen, that's important. It really yeah. is like not it, cheesy. It's not cheesy at all. Thank you so much for sharing. It means a lot to us. I, I wake up in the early in the morning. Lisa will attest to that, that <laughs> I spend some time alone. Like I'm always grateful for almost like literally everything, including just My having water, people. Sorry. <laughs> huh? My eyes starting to water. Sorry. You're not crying, I hope. No. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> we can't, we're not going to cry for camera. Cry for a million views, Brittany. Come on. Cry for a million views. <laughs> no. So, okay. Well, cool. I mean, I had a ton of fun yes. here today. and uh, it was, I love it. Yeah. So cool reflecting. And uh, I really do hope we can do it again. So. Oh, we um, will. Yeah. Thanks for leaving us with that gratitude. And let's, so let's, let's end this first episode on, on let's make sure we look back every year, at least, I mean, of course, grateful every day, but maybe new years from here forward for all of us. I think my takeaway from this is that I will reflect on my year before I look forward. It'd be great. I agree. Cool. All right, guys. Well, um, thanks, Brittany. Uh, Thank you're, you. you're the coolest. I can't wait thanks. to see you soon. Thank and, you. Um, see you guys. It was a pleasure hanging out with you and it's just been tons of fun. I hope we can, you know, bring more of this element to you guys and, um, you know, explore all these things. And our goal is really from taking the proverbial leap. Um, that's a big word my wife said, but taking that proverbial leap of the night from the nine to five, but all the way through, we're going to go into real marketing strategies to hit that million dollar mark. We really do want to see people hit that financial freedom. And it, it, that doesn't necessarily mean a million dollars, but that might be like in Brittany's case where her bills are paid, right? That's like literally the, the idealist, uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for here? Like, well, finding your freedom. Yeah, you're finding your freedom. That really gives you the sense of like, I'm I'm a millionaire. I can do what I want, when I want, with who I want, how I want. That essentially is, um, you know, kind of what we're after with this. And, um, well, and I think Brittany said it well too, like finding your why. Yeah, your why. That was yeah, a good right. takeaway as well. So, mm -hmm. all right, guys. Thanks a lot. And until the next episode, take her easy. And just remember, you might be the next one to fire your boss. Yeah.